Welcome back to another Geek What video and today I'm going to be talking about tech some more in my tech topics series. Now, sorry if this video is a bit waffly or I miss a, a few things out. I will try my very best, however, um, I am not scripting this video as I normally do with these type of videos, so just going to roll with it and see how it goes. So I get the question very, very often on pretty much every single PC build on my channel with over the thousand views, which is kind of, which is, which is literally every PC build. Um, can I edit on this PC? And in many cases, many of my PCs, yes, you can edit on them uh, and can edit very, very well. However, a lot of my PCs are at the budget end and this is where the questions start to occur. And maybe this is my fault for misinformation or not providing enough detail. However, and I'll start, I will try to start to elaborate on that and maybe it's also the fault of other YouTubers such as Scattervolt who, um, uh, if you haven't seen his channel, go and have a look at it where he says in some of his $300 builds uh, that you can edit because it's a quad-core CPU and that's completely wrong. And I will do a video about which CPUs are best for editing later on down the line if it's something which is uh, in demand for and something people will watch. However, editing is one of, if not the most intensive task on a PC. It's way more intensive than Photoshop is, and, and why? why? Why is video editing so intensive? Now, if you didn't know, a picture is essentially made up of loads of little tiny dots, each of which illuminate a different colour. On a PC screen, uh, this is where resolution comes from, 1920 across by 1080, so 1920 by 1080 is the total amount of pixels. So if you think about all the different dots all having to all having to illuminate a, little, a different colour, shall, shall we say, this is how many dots that your PC has has got to has got to render shall we say in a photo and that what that, that's what makes photo editing um photo editing so such an intensive task and if you didn't know what video is video is essentially a bunch of photos stitched together so that's 2.073 million pixels it's having to render out in a standard 1080p video per second uh, per second for a photo however for a video a video will have loads of photos um each of which have got tiny movements and this is where the, the sort of the flipbook design and the flipbook philosophy philosophy comes from and that's how you see those little flipbook stories and the same principles apply to video editing it's essentially between 24 and 60 uh, even even higher in some cases uh, pictures per second frames per second that's where the term comes from so imagine having to render out 2.73 million pixels 60 times in a second and that is what makes video editing such an intensive task you can get away with doing a bit of photoshop on a really weak machine like an i3 or a pentium even however for videos you're having to render out so many pixels and with especially the move to higher resolutions uh, people aren't going to want to edit 720p and anymore uh, they aren't going to want to edit 1080p anymore some people are going to want to edit 1440p and even 4k 4k editing is the most intensive thing you can do on a computer pretty much uh, along with 4k rendering so what pcs are suitable for editing and that's really the question uh, that i'm going to be that i need to address and that is probably my a thousand dollar pc and, and really really know the thousand dollar pc and upwards my $800 and 1000 PCs, because they are geared at gaming, tend to use i5s. Uh, now, the i5s fit in exactly the same socket as an i7 would as an equivalent i7. So, in my, in my, I would recommend, for example, that if you wanted to do edit, and I'd recommend at least an i7. You can get away with an i5 for some light 1080p and so definitely some 720p, absolutely no problem. But an i5 really isn't something I'd go for for editing. I'd rather spend the extra $150, £100 uh, and get the editing performance because the, the i7-6700K is a very uh, capable editing CPU. You. If you'd like to see a video between the 6700K and the 5820K, which is AMD's consumer and enthusiast lines of CPUs, then drop a like for that. But what is the point I'm trying to make? The point I'm trying to make is expectations in editing. You cannot expect uh, to buy a £300, a $400, a $500 PC and expect to edit because it isn't going to happen. Editing is a very intensive task with it, which requires a lot of CPU power, quite a lot of GPU power depending on your editing program and RAM. RAM is a huge thing. Editing, I would never edit with less than 16 gigabytes of RAM uh, because 8 gigabytes, it really isn't doable uh, because you have to allocate so much RAM to the editing software. And, uh, and I, I'm, I use 32 gigabytes of RAM and still find myself wanting even more. So, eight, so all my systems, all my gaming systems uh, tend to come with 8, eight or in the $800 and 1000 gaming PCs come with 16 gigabytes of RAM. So what do, you want, what do you need to do if you want to turn one of my builds into an editing system? Take my one, either my $800 or $1000 gaming PC builds, take the i5 and up it to an i7 which is capable of editing, and then also bump the RAM up from either 8 to 16 gigabytes or from 16 gigabytes to 32 gigabytes for even more performance. And hopefully you found this video helpful. Sorry if it has disappointed you considering what your expectations were. And that does and I do, I do apologise for that, but I try not to mis mislead people. I'd rather not put in my comments when people ask me questions, is this PC gonna edit? I'd rather not lie just to make them smile because when they're gonna get that PC and it's not gonna be able to edit. And a line is not something I do. You can watch Scattervolt's PC builds, not so much Quartermush because he's very reliable. Oh, you can watch Scattervolt's PC builds and he will say you can edit on a four hundred dollar PC. And and you can't. My four hundred dollar PCs and his four hundred dollar PC 
NPCs haven't got a major difference in his aren't going to edit and neither are mine and that's purely because you cannot get that type of thing for $400. If you go and buy a MacBook which is optimised for editing with 16 gig of RAM and i7 you end up paying near enough sort of three four thousand dollars so you know thousand dollar PC set your expectations right 16 or 32 gigs around and a core i7 at the very minimum uh, and, and and that is what you want to go for if you have found this video helpful drop a like rating below make sure to subscribe and we'll see you in the next geek what video